I hope you took the time to code this up, work with it, toy with it, tweak with it, wrestle with it is what I like to call it, uh, and see if you can figure out what the problem is. Why are we having these issues? I'm just going to show you the answer here, but I hope you're able to figure it out on your own. Uh, watch what I'm going to do here, just to get you thinking for a little bit. I'm going to lock numbers, okay, and I'll put a closing curly right there. Okay, lock numbers. All right, so essentially I've just put all this code, almost everything, inside of some numbers. I put almost everything inside this lock, and we're locking with numbers there. And let's watch it run here. We see, um, well, just, just take a minute and pause the video and look at this output and think about what the output's doing here. Producing thread, adding 8 to the queue, consuming thread 0, grab date, producing thread, adding, or producing thread, adding 0 to the queue, uh, consuming thread zero, adding zero. So, so producing thread produced an eight. It was consumed. It produced a zero. It was consumed. So thread zero got both of those. Uh, producing thread added a five. Two woke up. Did some work. Looks like zero got in here. Zero. Thread zero and thread two are being bullies here. Not until the very end does thread number one uh, actually grab a three and add it to its total. So on and so forth. And then, and then down here we're done adding. The total is thirty nine. Now to make debugging simpler I'm actually going to put a hard-coded seed in here like I did in the previous example so that we can get consistent results between runs it's a nice debugging trick I want consistent results between runs so that we can decipher what's going on notice we're just sitting around waiting for that um, for that time to go by remember uh, we did that join here okay so we say, hey, let's join, join, join. But each thread, each of these worker bee threads, they're not going to quit checking until 11 seconds is up. So this this uh, join loop here is just going to wait uh, at the minimum 11 seconds because every consuming thread, worker bee thread, if you would, will wait uh, 11 seconds before before they die, and then the join will return. Okay, well, that's that's kind of pathetic, right, what we got here. Let me... Let's, let's run that again. I want to emphasize that. Let's watch this. Look at this. All of our producing is happening. All of our consuming is happening. If you notice, the producing thread is not producing nearly fast enough for the consuming threads. The consuming threads immediately grab something and consume it. And then notice it took a while for that last line to come out here. Let's run it again. Just to emphasize how long it takes, I'm going to sit here quietly until that last line pops out. Wasted time, wasted time. Ah, there we go. Done adding, total is 41. All right, so there's there's better ways to synchronize between these threads. We're going to see in a future video how these threads can signal each other, saying, hey, I'm done, you're done, I'm done, that kind of thing. But for now, our exception's gone. And all I had to do to get rid of the exception was to put this lock on here. All right, no big deal. No big deal. I just had to put this lock on here. So how does adding the lock change the behavior. What does this lock do? I pause the video and think about it. How did the lock solve that exception problem? Let me explain how the lock did that. I'm going to comment this lock out for now. Okay, see, I can actually leave the braces in there. That's not a big deal. Um, if numbers not count as zero, so think about it. Thread, we got three threads going on. Actually four, I guess. So the producing thread uh, here's our, let's do our shared queue. I'm going to draw our shared queue out here. The producing thread, I can't remember what number it produced. Let's run a control F. Oh, I took the lock off. Of course we got an error. The producing thread, for the first number, let's see, it produces 3, 6, 8, 1. So I'm just going to write those ones down. Those are on our, our queue. So 3, 6, 8, 1. That's our, our Q structure there. The producing thread throws them on. The consuming threads have to come in here and say, hey, uh, what is there? In fact, actually, before I do the 6, 8, and 1, the producing thread simply throws a 3 on there. Okay, we'll just have the 3. Alright. Well, in the meantime, the producing thread, it decides it wants to go to sleep. Remember, it doesn't produce these numbers very fast. We have not produced numbers here. We have the sleep where it's just, oh, I'll throw something on there and I'm going to go to sleep. Well, it goes to sleep and the thread scheduler wakes up and says, okay, well, I got these other three consuming threads. Let me, let me do them in, uh, I'll do them in red. Okay, we got consuming thread zero, consuming thread one, consuming thread two. I'm going to give these guys some time to get in there and do some work. Well, it's up to the thread scheduler how far these threads get in here. But let's just say thread zero wakes up and says, oh, okay, uh, if, if numbers.count is not zero, well, is numbers.count 
Uh, is it not zero? Well, it's it's one right now. There's one item in there. So this turns out to be true. I know that's not as hard to think about, but but um, this turns out to be true. So thread zero gets in here and says, okay, let's DQ. Well, in the meantime, while it's DQing, the uh, thread scheduler could pull thread zero off the CPU and say, oh, I say here, here, thread one, you go. In fact, maybe what's really actually happening is thread one is going at the exact same time as thread zero. Remember, I have several uh, processors here on my computer, right? So those threads could, are probably most likely running concurrently. So thread one wakes up, and thread one's going at the same time as zero, and it says, hey, is numbers.count not zero? All right, here's thread one. Here's thread zero. Is, is numbers.count not zero? Okay, same check that thread zero did. Okay. Well, yeah, it's not zero. Thread, thread zero is trying to pull this three off. But right now, the count is still not zero. So thread one's like, oh, okay, I'll go in here, and I'm going to try to DQ. Well, what's even worse is thread two's like, hey, I'm going to go, guys. I'm going to go same time, same time. Let me in, let me in, let me in. Okay, so here comes thread two, and it says, hey, is count not zero? Well, no, it's not zero. There's a three there. Thread zero is trying to grab that three. Also, thread one's trying to grab that three. You guys are racing. There's a key term for you. You have a race condition. You are all racing to grab that three. Okay, now one of the threads gets in there and grabs it. Let's say thread zero grabs it, all right? Thread zero comes along, says, DQ, I got the three, all right? Well, thread one comes in here and says, ooh, 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 DQ, and the, and the Q's like, um, 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 there's nothing to give you, buddy. And thread, the thread two at the same time is like, DQ, gimme, 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 gimme. And, and the Q's like, uh, I don't know what else to do. I'm just going to chuck an exception at you. All right. So that's why we get this, this, uh, let's close the program. That's why we're getting these, uh, exceptions here. Basically thread zero and thread two tried to go in there. In this case, thread zero and thread two tried to grab that, grab that first number, but thread one was able to grab the number before, before thread zero or thread two were, were able to grab it. All right. We have race conditions and, 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 uh, that's the problem. In the next video, I'm going to explain why we got a race condition, how we can handle it, why the lock fixed that. We already saw locking a little bit before. What are some other ways we can um, overcome these race conditions as well?